the year of the pandemic we have all types of crazy stuff that's going on and if you were to dive into the unemployment numbers we could potentially have 50 million people unemployed and the numbers growing i want you to think about it. this the year of the murder hornet the discovery of alien civilizations and all of that has compared and paled into this coronavirus and you've got people who believe that the virus is fake i have someone who's arguing with me about what's going on in florida and florida is presenting itself to be the next next epic center of this pandemic and I want to understand, I know it's an election year. I know that you're getting a ton of information. I know that you are being bombarded with headlines, but I want you to dig a little deeper into the data because this unemployment thing is huge because the first round of unemployment layoffs happened because of the pandemic. This second round of layoffs is happening because businesses are making evaluations and they're getting rid of people. And this is slowing down the economy. Do you understand that the richest segment of America has cut their spending? Uh, there was an article in NPR talking about the wealthiest households have reduced their spending. And then you've got other groups of people who have reduced their spending. But the poorest segment, they're spending like they did before the pandemic. They're buying TVs, they're buying sofas, they're buying all this unnecessary stuff because part of the economic strata is habit. And if you're in the habit of spending money without looking at the repercussions you're going to continue these habits even if things are bad. And this is one of the things about climbing social classes. Take George W. Bush, who wasn't the smartest person, but he was socialized to be rich. This is how you have people who are not that intellectually bright who are rich. And you're like, I'm smarter than this fool. You, you've, run, you've come across people who were managers and business owners and you got to know them and you realize that from an intellectual level, you were smarter than this person, but you missed out on the socialization of being rich. Bill Gates was socialized to be rich. Jeff Bezos was socialized to be rich. See, one of the things that this pandemic has revealed is who the players are and who the players are not. And it goes deep into your socialization. It goes deep into your upbringing. And if you did not have the socialization of being rich, it's being exposed right now. Look at all of the rich guys, Warren Buffett, Stanley Druckenmiller, Jerome Powell of the Fed. They are all agreeing with me that there will not be a V-shaped recovery. And once again, with these things going on, because going back to unemployment, and unemployment is huge. We cannot have a recovery until this un unemployment stops. Till we get to the point where unemployment stops, people stop filing for unemployment benefits. And understand, recently there was hundreds of people marching on the state's capital in Kentucky because they've been unemployed for months and they've not been able to get benefits. This is why I say we have probably 50 million Americans unemployed because we have a large, we have millions and millions of people who can't file for unemployment. They can't get through, they can't get in, they can't get through unemployment benefits. And these people are part of the unemployment situation, but for stats, they don't count because they haven't gotten their unemployment benefits with those fake numbers. I don't understand how Trump could even fix his mouth to say we have 13.3% unemployment 
when we had more people unemployed in June and May than we did in April. In April, unemployment was 14.7%, which once again was erroneous number because it was higher. In the year of the pandemic, we're gonna look back at this and we're gonna see crazy things because one of the things that is happening is this civil war between people who wear a mask and people who don't wear a mask. And it, it, it's crazy how people have chosen, because literally on Facebook, I will see post after post talking about these masks aren't gonna help you, you're stupid for wearing the mask, I'm not wearing the mask. I went to get my prescription at Costco during the pandemic and I had a mask on, so the lady let me in and there was this dude who didn't have a mask on. People are getting irritated. They're getting violent. They're got attitude because certain establishments will not allow you to enter without a mask. And they're like, I don't have a mask. I don't want to wear a mask. Wearing the mask is stupid. And you know what's funny about this whole wearing a mask, not wearing a mask conversation? To drive your car, you need a driver's license. Not a problem. This is a state mandate. When you're driving the car, you should wear your seatbelt or you can get a ticket. Not a problem. And wearing the seatbelt is a precautionary measure that only applies if you have an accident. Because if you drive for 20 years and never have an accident, whether you wear a seatbelt or not doesn't really matter. But this thing with the mask, which is a precautionary measure, people are up in arms about it. People are losing their minds about wearing the mask. Like, hey, you know, go ahead in the garage and spray some paint on your mask. And you see these, then blow your nose. You see these black specks up your nose. These would, many people have become experts upon mask in the United States of America. There are many things that we do as precautionary merit. Having car insurance is a precautionary measure. No one seems to have a problem with this, but this thing with the mask is become epidemic. Cause I watched videos, there was this guy, he, he has a trucking channel and he tried to go somewhere and get some vittles without a mask and he was irritated. And there, there are many people, and this is why Many, many months ago, I predicted that America was going to have the highest infection rate because we look at so many things as an infringement upon our liberty. Wearing a mask, you're infringing on my constitutional rights. And here's the thing. If people would take 100% ownership of their health, and if they got like the corona and it's like, well, I'm not going to go to the hospital because I'm sick. That, that, that's not how it's going to happen. They're going to go to the hospital. They're going to use resources. And, you know, it is crazy what is happening to people. It is insane what is happening to people because people want, it's kind of like you living with Big Mama. You, your wife, and your kids are living in Big Mama's house. And Big Mama has certain sets of rules that if you want to stay in Big Mama's house, you got to abide by these rules. Well, this isn't how America is working right now. You've got people who want to stay up in Big Mama's house and live by their rules and do what they want to do and come in late. You know, Big Mama, she got to get a rest. She ain't trying to be up at four or five o'clock in the morning when you coming in and in the kitchen frying up some eggs and, and some bacon because you hungry coming from the club. Big Mama ain't going for that. But since you are an adult, since you're grown, that's what you want to do. You want to be so you want to be grown in someone else's house. And this is how America's acting, because make no mistake about it. The states are not closing down. The governor of Texas is lying to people. It's like, hey, you know, we're okay. And literally under the video, I saw people who lived in Texas like, why is he lying? Why is he lying? Why is he lying? The cases are exploding. So the public at large knows that the politicians are lying. 
it's about keeping this false narrative. I think the the year of the pandemic will be the year of the false narrative because there's a whole bunch of people who believe that the coronavirus is a hoax because they don't know anybody. They don't know anybody. They don't know anyone that knows anybody. So because it isn't real in their sphere, they think that it's a joke, that it's some type of conspiracy. But if you were to go to New York or shortly go to Florida, you're going to start to know people with it and understand that it's real. And also, since we had the unfortunate murder of George Floyd, people have forgotten. And now protesters in Houston and Minneapolis and all these places, they're starting to get sick. Once again, we talked about this because it's like about two weeks after these protests, we, we should start to see people getting sick. And people, I think, have made the calculation that if I get it, I get it. I'm not going to live my life in fear. And after much thought and consideration, I don't think shutting down the country was the answer because look at the repercussions. Because, yes, we have flattened the curve and, yes, we're saving lives. But I feel right now, based upon the comments I've seen on social media, that, you know, because literally you've been seeing this on the GOP side, X amount of people die every day. So it's like, if you die, you die. That's the calculation. That is the math on this whole thing. If you die, you die. We will miss you. We will pour some out on your grave for the folks who are not here. But we need to keep this economy trucking. And I think in the year of the pandemic, the economy has been irrevocably harmed. Many, many things have been exposed during this pandemic. Like one of the things that is many companies, and I have a video talking about the hostile employment environment after the pandemic. Many of the companies have seen their productivity skyrocket and they're looking at who's doing the productivity and it's not the people making the money. It's these junior associates who are hungry, who want to climb up the ladder. So one of the casualties of this pandemic is going to be six figure earners who are not contributing to the bottom line. This pandemic has exposed the fragile American economic system. It's just opened it up because for three years, I've been telling you this recession was coming. No, I did not know we were going to have a pandemic. I, I had no clue that was going to happen, but I did know that the economy wasn't as good as what you were told. And this literally, we shut the country down for three months and this has created damage that could be around for the next decade. I want you to think about that. We closed for three months and we can have 10 years of pain for closing down three years. See, there is a flaw with the American economy. Back in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s and the 70s, we used to make stuff. And then some smart MBA is like, well, if we take the manufacturing from here from America and stop paying the American worker X amount of dollars and we go to Japan, we go to China, we go to Vietnam, we go to India and we pay them per hour, we pay them per day what we paid an American per hour. In many cases, that's half like. I think I don't even know what auto workers make. I think they make 44 bucks an hour. And essentially these people in these third world countries are getting one fourth of that. They're getting 10 bucks a day, not 10 bucks an hour, but 10 bucks a day to do the same work. I mean, honestly, I, I, I'm actually about to participate in that economy because I'm getting me some VAs in the Philippines where I can literally pay them what I would pay in a week at minimum wage for the whole month. And this is the, the trend. This is the global economy. This is one of the things that's happening. And you're going to see more of this. You're going to see more outsourcing to third world countries. You're going to see more um, automation. 
and you're going to see more uh, layoffs because I am almost sure that we're going to have layoffs. It is June from now to December. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I, my math is wrong. Hopefully the way I'm looking at this stuff is wrong <clears throat> because before we start recovering, we got to stop crashing. And like I said, the stock market, for those of you who want to do the stock market, I'm going to have education at Savage Finance about stock market, how they invest. You will be good if you get in the stock market late 2021, early 2022. It's going to crash. It's going to go up and down. It's going to be because, you know, if you're a long term investor, you don't want to be looking at the stock market on a day by day basis or a weekly basis because you lose your mind. <clears throat> you want to look at it what it does year after year after year. Because right now, you know, there are people on channels like, oh, the stock market went up, yay, it went up today. Then the next day it goes down, they don't have nothing to say. You cannot be a micromanager of the stock market because that would just, you know, you gotta buy and hold good stocks, make good choices, do your research. But in the year of the pandemic, and also, <clears throat> We're just halfway through this year. We've got all types of craziness that's going to happen between now and December. It's an election year. This is why you're about to see politicians lie like you ain't never seen them lie before. Like this, er this erroneous jobs report, which was just, and even when they put it out, it's like, well, this report may be wrong because the classifications were not proper classifications in the opening statement. Because see, the politicians know how America thinks. And this is why I, I guarantee you all types of good news is gonna come out August, September, and October. <clears throat> the economy is gonna turn around, the stock market is gonna be surging, unemployment is gonna go down, unemployment is gonna go away. Right now, Trump is saying that the, the Rona has gone away. He needs for it to go away. Even though when people gather in mass and protest and, you know, there was a group of 16 women who went out to dinner and all six of them, 16 of them got the Rona. And then also another thing that you're getting in the year of the pandemic is people questioning the numbers. Uh, I've got some Facebook friends that's like, you know, like someone accused me of lying about some stuff that you could easily fact check and see if it was true. And it's like, it isn't lying because many people believe that hospitals are getting paid to put COVID-19 on death certificates. I used to work in a hospital. Do you know that hospitals don't make money off dead people? They don't. They make money off keeping people alive. And there's all of these conspiracy theories because there, there are many people who believe the Corona virus is 100% fake because they don't know anybody. They've not seen anything and they don't understand. And also in the year of the pandemic, the first wave is still rolling through the country. And Florida is probably gonna be the next epicenter and after Florida, it's gonna be Texas. And I guarantee you, both Florida and Texas have Republican governors and they're gonna lie. It ain't happening. There was a scientist who worked for the state of Florida who got fired because she did not wanna falsify the numbers. So understand, just get ready. The infection rates are gonna skyrocket. We're not closing down again. And just hopefully you don't get it. Because that's what's going to happen because our public servants are going to lie to you for self-serving reasons. And it, it's, it's, it's crazy in this year of the pandemic because that, this whole thing with the mask is bewildering to me, but it's part of the American culture about freedom. And once you start talking about freedom and you start talking about civil liberties, you get into some dicey, dicey territory because this is America, home of the brave, land of the free. We do what we do here in America. This America, baby, this America. And that mindset was good for the longest of times. 
and it doesn't serve us well in this new economy because understand the the rona has reset the american economy for the next 10 years we had 30 million businesses plus the 8 million well plus the 8000 stock businesses based on the stock market cuz it's very hard for a business to be listed on the stock market they they have to do many things they have to have the financials they have to have the accounting they have to have good numbers so most of american businesses don't qualify for the stock market now we had 30 million businesses now we've got probably 22. during the last recession we lost 1.8 million businesses over the last recession 1.8 and in this recession we've already lost 8 to 10 million businesses in a matter of months what does this mean why am i telling you this that's a lot of jobs because of these eight to 10 million businesses, let's just say they each had three employees, the business owner and two employees. Some had less, some had more, but let's just say. So that's 20, at eight million people, eight million businesses, that's 24 million people without a job. Let's say if it's 10 million businesses, that's 30 million people without a job. See, this, this is the problem with the, the V-shaped recovery that many of these folks are not taking into account. These businesses were participating in the economy and they were part of the ebb and flow of the economy. And just like that, their lights were turned out. See, this is why unemployment is going to remain high for many, many years. And this is what no one else wants to tell you because they haven't done the analysis. They haven't done the math. The let's say, let's say it's 7.5 million businesses that close and they have three, that's 21 million people who don't have a job. You see, any way you look at it and during the great recession, only 15 million people were, that was the highest level of unemployment. Just the closing of these businesses is going to create unemployment of 24 to 30 million. Plus, corporate America is like, hey, we don't need Jill, we don't need John, we don't need. They're looking at people. They got all of this software to see if they're working, if they're producing, if they're putting out, if they're contributing to the bottom line. And they're finding out that many of these people were not contributing to the bottom line because they weren't working. So those people are going to be let go. So we could have 25 to 35 million people unemployed for years. And that's going to drain on the economy. That's going to slow down the economy because I feel that this will bring on a wave of entrepreneurship that we have not seen since the Great Depression. There were many people who were entrepreneurs by force, not by choice, but by force, because they had to do something to get some money in. And right now we're seeing vice like OnlyFans, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. It literally explode because during bad times, vice goes through the record. People are smoking in record numbers. People are drinking in record numbers. People are, are doing drugs in record numbers suicide rate is going through the roof because people are stressed people are looking for something to turn and one of the things that people don't understand and one of the things that people don't get is the pressure cooker that the pandemic has created there are many people who were not ready for this and like i said if you didn't have your money saved in 2019 you you didn't have time to get ready it just came and hit you upside the head and one of the things you've got to understand is this thing isn't going to go away overnight yes there are more people now than ever who are trying to buy houses because another thing that this pandemic exposed is how cramped it is to be up in an apartment i would like man i don't know if i would have made it if i had to stay up in an apartment because you know literally 
I got plenty of room to roam and this is what people are looking at and people like, you know, home is the home base. So you can have more and more mortgage applications, but here's something else that's happened. A lot of people have taken their homes off of the market. The supply has artificially been reduced because a lot of people and also rents are going down across the country. And I'm starting to see housing prices in certain markets go down. And once again, 2021, when it all falls apart, you're going to see housing prices crash. And this is one of the things, because right now, due to the stimulus package, the economy has been artificially propped up and the GOP Senate doesn't have the appetite to renew the $600 per week, an additional $2,400. They're like, we'll do 300. We ain't trying to do 600 because once again, another thing that the pandemic has exposed is for low wage workers who were on unemployment, they were making more money sitting at home doing nothing than they were working. And once again, when you give someone more money to do nothing, this becomes a habit. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. So they, are, they ain't trying to go back to work. They're, so we're going to have a messed up economy for a minute. And what is one to do? You got to start a business. You got to start a business. You, you got to start your own business because through, like during the Great Depression, one of the things, and it was kind of like a form of Airbnb, is many people who had large houses began renting out rooms to strangers and creating bed and breakfasts. So if they had like eight or nine rooms, they had like four extra bedrooms, they would rent out those extra bedrooms and everybody would have access to one bathroom to make extra money. Because Google the things that people did during the Great Recession and you will see that we're about to go through that again. People going back to Big Mama's house. People are gonna start renting rooms to strangers. You're going to start seeing people doing all kinds of things. You're going to see a stink. You're going to start seeing people doing something a little strange for a little change because people going to need money. They're going to need a lot of money. So what I want you to do is go below and join me this Sunday at 7 p.m. for a live webinar on how to retrain yourself to participate in the new economy. One of the things you've got to understand and one of the things you've got to know is this ain't optional. I know, you know, you want to get the job. I know you want to hang out with Big Booty Betty. I, I, I get that. But for long term success, you're going to have to take control of your destiny and you're going to have to take control of your own economy. That's what you got to do. So with that. Go below, go ahead and get enrolled for the webinar. I'm gonna give you a little bit off and then watch this next video.